What is going on, guys? Welcome back. Commentary for you. And listen, I just want to start off with this. This was during the stream. She picks up Julia, who clearly wants nothing to do with her. Julia then pushes away, jumps off. Because Chantal is so robust in her size, Julia ends up kind of falling off of her while she jumps because she has to clear so much of Chantal. She makes an awful noise when she falls. I mean, even Chantal was kind of taken back by this. And she can write it off as, you know, oh, Julia is just hyper. But, you know, at the end of the day, this is what happens when you turn your pets into props. So hopefully Julia is OK. But, you know, hopefully Chantel also learns from this and, and just stops, you know, throwing these pets in our faces. Julia also, the last time we saw her stomach, looked very matted. So, you know, it would be natural if she is still matted to be pulling away from somebody that wants to kind of squeeze her and hug her when her fur is just a mess. She goes live, though. It's about two hours it's nine o'clock when she starts there she obviously says hello starts eating immediately she said she's going to put on her microphone after she eats i don't actually believe that she does that and she's just eating kind of in a panic i notice that she has a new undercap on she says these are the ones that she bought the other day but never filmed and she says that she woke up during the call to prayer so she had to kind of rush to eat food and kind of scramble to get everything put together and order takeout the chat tells her to address the fact in the vlog that yesterday, a lot of people said it might have been old and she was kind of posting it to cover border hopping. She kind of laughs that off and says, you know, why does that even matter, even if it was true? And I guess Chantel, it matters because people are tired of being lied to by you, whether it's, you know, a reaction channel, whether it's someone that's critical of you, whether it's just a fan, whether it's someone that honestly just supports you as a member, watches all your videos, you know, people are tired of being lied to. They're tired of being deceived, especially when it's something so simple. Just be honest and tell people what you're doing. And, you know, maybe you won't have to deal with as many questions, which you deal with quite a bit during the stream. Uh, obviously, you know, she's wearing makeup, which she shouldn't be. Kind of just goes to work hand in hand with how many times she gets caught in lies. She is flying through food. I mean, you know, she obviously at one point even says she fears people count, you know, the number of fries, the sandwiches. But the reality is she's eating at such a rate. It, it's going to make people interested in how much she's actually eating. Because to be fair, she's probably eating at such a clip that she's not even aware of how much she's eating. And that's probably why someone does it. Because we lose track watching. She loses track chewing. She goes through this dream of needing to go to the bathroom, which, I mean, knowing what we've known about Salah, and trust me, we're going to get to that in a moment, why is she even having that discussion? Why is she even talking about this dream of all of a sudden, you know, having a catheter and needing to go into people's homes? She said she's been reading some comments and perhaps visiting a reaction channel, which she later admits was more than likely FFG, and people have talked about Sala not having a job. And she said she can always tell when people are talking about them because of the comments that she gets. And she says, number one, Sala has a business. So how can he have no job? And number two, how do we know he doesn't have a job? Which is kind of like the same as number one. So really, we haven't done anything other than her say number two, which is probably something she does just for Sala to kind of get his jollies. But at the end of the day, she says we know nothing about his life or situation. And to go back to what I spoke about before, you know, this is categorically false you know we know that she said while comparing him to someone else that that person quote didn't have a job either you know we also know that you said we would be going out to the vandalay warehouse to see the operation that they run there and we never did and we also know that he was asking kybella for money Th those are all things that we've been shown we've seen or we've learned through you chantal so when you go into FFG and the past relationships, the settled evictions, which is your only go-to, this is all you have to fall back on, you can sit there and say, oh, Salah's employment is nobody's business, but Chantal, you contradict yourself because FFG's past relationships, her past evictions are, are really no one's business either. You know, you are the one, though, that is making all of this public trying to sell his products, trying to take your viewers to his broken website to buy Beezer Spray, trying to get them to purchase Unicity through his link. You know, you are the one that does all this. And of course, she actually transitions from this right over to Pete's because she says, you know, Pete's had a job at Walmart. Her and Pete's worked at a call center. Pete's is employed now. And the reason this is brought up specifically, though, is because people in the chat are kind of pressing back that Chantal constantly has men that are unemployed in her life. I mean, truthfully, she's had three relationships and three jobless men. It does seem a little bit strange. But, you know, she also does want to bring up finances. Talks about how, you know, people can be better. People can be worse. Chantal, 
understand, people can see what we make on YouTube. It's not some big surprise. It's not some hidden figure, okay? So the fact that you talk about finances, I I'm actually going to get to a challenge for you later on in this video, for just, just for you and Sal, a personal challenge for me to you. After Peach, she goes right into Natter. She is literally sitting here during Ramadan talking about Natter. She talks about how hard YouTube is, you know, unless you want to be a reaction channel or just use her name for clown and attention like Natter does. Chantal, listen, just because you're sitting there sweating doesn't mean you're putting in hard work and sweat into this. She goes in, obviously, to reaction channels and how we don't have jobs, right? We don't have jobs because we snipe her. We make content right after she's done. Are you efficient? She's shaming me, Chantal. Are you really shaming me for how efficient I am? I know the only thing you're efficient in is eating food, but the fact of the matter is you talk about so little and so much of the same things during these streams. You can watch them at two times speed. You can take just basic notes and then provide a summary that people will much prefer to watch from what I've seen, from what my likes look like, from what my views look like, rather than sit through your live stream for two and a half hours. That's called being efficient and understanding what a customer wants in a product. Those are things maybe you and for, you know, Salah's business, you should take note of. You should be actually maybe asking me for suggestions, asking me for help. And to that point, she goes on and says the bees are spray. You know, that was just a limited time thing. So evidently, they're not making it anymore, that it would have been different if they were in Canada because shipping would have been easier. The chat mentions, and, you know, honestly, it's interesting that she can sit there and say how fat she is. She can sit there and say, so what, I'm fat. At least I show myself on camera. When she's talking about trying to degrade reaction channels that don't, quote, cam up. So keep in mind, she could admit her size like that. She can admit that Salah might not have a job, but when a reaction channel does it, you know, we're making it up. We're being rude to her. The chat brings up the fact that she stared a man down in the store. She said she's not sure what people are talking about because Salah, Salah is her eye candy. And then almost on cue, he enters the chat and she starts singing Handsomest Man. And she wouldn't have made that song about him if she wasn't infatuated with him. The chat says, we also saw the Snicker bars in the store. And she says, listen, no one's perfect. At least we're not being told these are for the Vandalay Fragrance Summits that they hold each week. But it just goes to show, you can go and look at even the smallest of things, and there's dishonesty and mistruths in almost everything she does, even down to what she buys. She later actually holds up those Snicker bars proudly and says that they still have a few left. Chantella was a twin pack of full-size bars. You bought them yesterday. You would think that at most, maybe you ate one or two. It looks like you would ate up to four or five. But I know, I know you're going to blame Sal on eating them. She talks about how much she walked yesterday. And now her leg feels weaker after the sciatica. And let me just say, Chantal, this should scare you. This should actually scare you badly because your body is now showing you weakness. Most likely, it's unable to heal properly. It's unable to regain strength properly because you are getting older. But you just continue to eat and put more and more weight on it. I, I literally don't understand. She said she doesn't understand how reaction channels have a life. She offers that she's like a TV show for just someone's entertainment, right? And nobody obsesses over shows the way they do her. They simply watch a show and then log off. This is such an incorrect statement, right? If you actually watch some shows, they'll have, you know, a whole after show simply to talk about it. There are people that devote entire channels to talking about TV shows. There are people that actually take shows and movies and continue the storyline on their own once the show has been completed. But, you know, Chantal just wants to kind of pretend this just happens to her. You know, when all these things that she gets involved in that ultimately become lies, you know, no one else deals with these things. And to that point, she kind of laughs this off when, you know, she says people pretend that she's some diabetical mastermind that, you know, border hops and has all these businesses. And, you know, Chantal, it's not that at all. I know that you want people to think that you're, you know, this ultra smart mastermind that has all this figured out. But the reality is you've been caught in so many lies. We know you're not even doing the things you should be doing. Doing, and we have to think about what you're actually doing to get the results that you have. She spends most of this stream, at least the first hour or so, maybe 90 minutes, eating, stopping to drink water, gets up just to get the water, by the way, and is out of breath. 
she starts then this very, very distasteful, and I've spoke about this so many times. When she comes online, she's bored, right? She doesn't have a topic. She doesn't have anything to talk about, and she talks herself into trouble. She talks herself into things that she shouldn't be saying and degrading people that she doesn't even mean to degrade. So she starts this thought process that reaction channels, we must work at Wendy's. And because we're talking about Salah not having a job, he's actually being job shamed because she's projecting now that while he has a job, it's this low paying Wendy's worker esque job. Then she immediately realizes, oh, I've insulted fast food workers, which, by the way, are the lifeblood of her diet. And she expresses that she meant that that was the type of job Salah has. So if you're insulting him, in turn, you're kind of like insulting the everyday worker, the, the blue collar worker now. And then she realizes that she might have just kind of painted Salah as barely making, you know, labor standards and wages and kind of recants that whole statement and says, well, you know, we wouldn't know how much Salah makes because his job is perfect. You know, obviously he could support himself before they met and he's supporting himself now. And even if he wasn't, he could just go get another job. Chantal, again, if you would come online with talking points, with, with things to actually discuss and not constantly have to defend yourself, you wouldn't get into these situations where you insult people who more than likely are in your audience. Salah then comes in the chat and talks about he could pay people's basement rent. I've never seen, in all of my life, I've never seen a couple with less brag about so much. They, they are renting an apartment. They either just leased or bought a new SUV in the past six months. They've moved three times in the last eight few months, and each time they've done this, they've needed to make a video to show off the purchase, to show off the car, to show off the homestead. I'll make you a deal. This is the deal that I'm going to make you, okay? Are you listening? I know you're listening, Chantel. Are you listening, Salah? I want you, Chantel, to show me how much YouTube income you have left. How much of all that you made, right? I'm sure we both made three figures on YouTube. How much do you have left? Okay, you show me how much you have left and I'll show you how much I have left. And then we'll talk about the actual context of who is broke. We'll talk about who actually can live where they want, regardless of where that is. Let me know how you feel about that. I don't think you're going to agree to it, but I figured I'll just throw it out there. I, I really don't have any shame in the income I saved. Now, she turns this into, you know, Salah moved from his bachelor pad to a place with a view by the sea, a place for windows so they can have cats. She said before, Salah had his own house, despite it clearly being an apartment. She then kind of follows into this standard, you know, we can't be broke. Look at all the places we go. And it's just such an inconsistent way to defend that you're not broke. You know, just because reaction channels don't come in here and show what they're doing or show what they have, it doesn't mean that they're broke. It just means we're not living our life as online for public validation as you two are. As I said before, Chantal, YouTube income, public knowledge. No one has to project. No one has to guess. Right? People can go see. Right, wrong, or indifferent, they know. She continues to eat while saying, you know, Sal is with her because they love each other. Because she can sing. She can have fun. She's beautiful. She mocks reaction channels while singing. She says, you know, these people are morons. We all look worse than her. That's why we hide off camera. She, again, gets out of breath just drinking, saying she's going to do another Madonna remake after this. The chat urges her to just stop focusing on food and reaction channels, which is really all she's done for the entire stream. Worry about her health. She just laughs this off. It, it's incredible to me that she won't laugh off what people think of her. She won't laugh off, you know, these fabrications she says people drums up, but she will laugh off her health because she said God made her a Beezer. Rather than talk about her health, she wants to talk about the Beetlejuice trailer. Then she goes right back to reaction channels, how they, you know, have to go frame by frame to look at how fat she is. She apologizes for being so sassy. While Sala says, you know, he's apparently in the other room watching soap operas. She kind of validates that he does this. So she has to actually leave and go get Howie. When she returns, she's, again, out of breath. She has to quickly return Howie once Julie approaches him. She then, I will say, there are times Chantal can be endearing and can be funny, and she actually was in this stream. I, it's not all bad. She has this song about fruit flies always appearing when she comes around, which is actually funny because it's true. 
the chat then kind of corrects her like hey you know fruit flies come around because of things that are sweet not things that are you know kind of i guess less than desirable scented but she says you know the song really just speaks more to her lack of sanitation from there she goes on to talk about her teeth her fear of getting veneers wanting them whiter she throws a bottle cap for julie to play with which is a terrible idea if you have a cat do not really any animal do not give them a bottle cap i mean it's very something easy to choke on she is just chugging water and you can really also tell if you just watch this you know maybe the last 20 25 minutes of this live stream they are so front loaded with drama like she just has to get it out of her system she's kind of on this food high if you will she's ranting she's raving and then she kind of comes down off of it and there's really nothing to talk about she says that you know if something happened to her speaking of her own morbidity sala would take care of the pets and the chat actually, again, iterates, hey, listen, you should not have all this conflict during Ramadan. And she says, you know, while that's true, most people in Ramadan right now, they're not being followed by so many brain dead morons. She then goes on to kind of, again, ha have a very poor discussion about where she lived as a child, citing it was, quote, the hood. And that's where she got stuck in an elevator. The chat asks Sala to come in and say hi. I mean, he's kind of been sporadically in the chat on and off. And she says she isn't sure that he can, despite claiming that he's there. Any other time, he kind of barges in like he's Kramer, blasting music and disheveled. But when the chat asks for him, he can't show up. He wasn't there to check on Julie. He wasn't there to bring in Howie. So again, that's why we're getting caught in kind of all of these lies. She then talks about, you know, being rich, being poor, how they donate money, how it's based on the income they make, how she's happier now than ever before. She loves this expat building. And after two hours of going on and on about reaction channels and how, you know, now all of a sudden, if you have money to pay bills, own a car in your own place, if you can afford food after all that, then you're rich because of just the nature of the economy and inflation. Chantal, you didn't have that same thought process through 95% of the stream. You were degrading so many people based on where they must live, what they must have, and then projecting what they didn't have simply because they're not broadcasting it to YouTube. Listen, where I came from, Chantal, if you were showing things off, it was because you didn't want them. If you were showing things off, they were eventually going to get stolen. I, I can clearly tell that you didn't come from that type of place because you have no problem showing off everything that you get, even if you don't even own it in the process. She closes out by saying she prefers to pray at home. She's been to a few mosques, but again, home is where the prayer is. I'm going to leave you guys with the top comments from the last video. I am sure the next one is going to have some Julia references, and I will be back soon as I can with more comments.